Greetings, starlings and starlets across the known dimensions. If you're like us, you're probably psyched for the new episodes of Star vs. the Forces of Evil. There's no doubt the crew of Star vs. are experts at leaving us begging for more. And they certainly did that once again with the end of the battle for Muni. Still, the one episode that has done this the best so far has to be Star Crushed. If you haven't seen any of those episodes yet, then don't waste any more time watching this and go watch them. We'll still be here when you're done. Seriously, spoilers from here on. Wasn't that awesome? If you're new to the fandom, try to imagine having to wait for all that awesomeness after Star Crushed and the big cliffhanger that it had. Huh. Doesn't sound so easy, does it? Okay, on to the video now. Star Crushed was an intense episode, to say the least. Between the Moon and Toffee battle, the loss of Lekman, and the huge amount of Starko drama, there's one thing that might have gone unnoticed. The two big events going on at the same time are Moon going after Ludo and Toffee, and Star having to deal with the fallout from Song Day and the issue of her crush on Marco. While Moon is joined by the High Commission, Star calls an emergency friend meeting and is joined by Ponyhead, Janna, Kelly, and Starfan13, who was there the whole time. These two teams seem to be intended to run parallel to each other. And when you look a little closer, Star's friends are actually really similar to the members of the High Commission. Really, really similar. Each member of the Commission seems to have a counterpart in Star's circle of friends. Let's start with Ponyhead and Time Out Guy, uh, Rombulus. Both of them can act a bit immature, have a penchant for getting in trouble, and they can shoot lasers. They share a similar color scheme on their main bodies, have pointy heads, and both of them are friends with Star. There's something else about Romulus's head. It looks like a crystal, and with the cape he wears, it creates a disconnect between his head and his body. Furthermore, his hands are two living, talking snakes, and there is a difference in color between them, his head and his torso. It kind of suggests that his body is not originally his. Like Ponyhead, Romulus could, in fact, be just a head, and that's more of a theory than fact. If nothing else, his design creates this impression. Lekmit, our dearly departed angel goat demon, shares similar qualities with probably the equally strangest of Star's friends, Starfan13. If you look at Starfan13's horns, they are very similar to Lekmit's horns in the middle of his head. Starfan13 also wears a pair of wings, which Lekmit also has. Goats are known for having some of the most unusual looking eyes in the animal kingdom, and Lekmit's eyes are unusual in their shape when compared to other commissioned members. Starfan13's eyes are unusual in respect that she is the only one of Star's friends clearly wearing glasses. Kelly seems to wear them too, but it's not quite as obvious. Lastly, Starfan13 Fainting to Star's admitted crush on Marco is at least symbolically similar to Lekman's death. This next one was a little harder to explain, especially when you're comparing two characters who have the names Omnitrax is Prime and Kelly. To begin with, when we were both introduced to these characters, we didn't hear their voices until much later. They also both have this kind of large aspect that make up their being. For Kelly, it's her large, luxurious blue hair. For Omnitraxis, it's all that space stuff. Also, Omnitraxis Prime's head has these swords or sword-like antennae thing on his head. In the episode, before she's called to the meeting, Kelly is fighting a large beast and wields a sword. Coincidence? We don't think so. Lastly, we have two equally popular characters, Janna and Hekapu. Hekapu's dimensional powers, essentially the power to go anywhere, is quite similar to Janna's talent for getting into places and opening locks, essentially going anywhere she wants to go. There's also the somewhat flirtatious antagonistic relationship that they both share with Marco. Teams Janko and Markapu know what we're talking about. Janna also has the fascination with the dark and morbid, which is part of why many also ship her with Tom and Hekapu's dimension seems to have a similar feel to it. Also, Hekapu has fangs, and Janna once wore fangs in the interdimensional field trip episode. Both of them also seem to take the spirit of girl power to heart, 
bringing sassy attitudes and a tendency that makes them both so lovable. So, what are we to take from this? Simple, happy coincidences. Or could there be more going on here? Although Lekma is gone, three of the four Hot Commission members are still around. Previews for the rest of Season 3 suggest they are indeed going to come back. Coincidentally, the same corresponding members of Star's Friends can be seen in the show's new opening sequence. Lekman's death suggests that the High Commission members are not necessarily immortal, and it also leaves an apparent opening on the Commission. Could Lekman be replaced? Could any of the High Commission be replaced? If so, could Star's Friends in fact be the next High Commission? Honestly, it's such a crazy idea it could go either way. But what do you think? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Did you like the video? We've got more! Check out our channel and subscribe so you know when we release new ones. Spread the word and share with other Star vs. fans. On Amino, check out the Star vs. the Forces of Evil Amino group. And as always, peace through nachos, Star Children.